with this amazing planet that we live on with all of these beautiful places to see and things to do no matter where you go in the world you're bound to want to come back to that place to see something you couldn't see before barcelona and spain was a completely different ball game for me when i was there all i wanted to do was live there and i wonder if you can figure out why Vamos, and let's get amongst it in Barcelona, or as they say, Barcelona. G'day all you beautiful people of planet Earth and welcome to episode 9 of Planet Positivity. Although I wish I got to see all of Spain, what I can tell you is about Barcelona. After we arrived in Barcelona, it was late afternoon and we got to drive around the whole city and see all the major tourist attractions that the must-see things when you're in Barcelona. The beauty of this part of the trip was that we actually got to have three or four days completely free without anything really organized. So we got to see things and experience and explore at our own leisure. What's there to do on our first night, but try the, the famous paella or paella. And so we went to this place that was kind of across the street from all the nightclubs, which many of us were keen to go and experience. <laughs> It wasn't the best food that I ate in Spain, but it doesn't really matter because the sangria was $20 for a jug. So I'm not going to lie, some went harder than others. <laughs> Oh, the sangria was so good. But anyway, after a while, the band slowed down and it became a karaoke bar. And if you haven't noticed, our group's a bit big on the sing-alongs without a karaoke situation. So most of the people in our group stayed behind to enjoy the karaoke, but the rest of us had somewhere else to be. As I was lining up, waiting to go into the um, flamenco place, I just happened to hear some music behind me and there's certain songs that are just famous around the world. And I could hear Oasis, Wonderwall being played. And as I turned around, there was this massive group of women just singing their hearts out and loving life. So I decided to quickly get amongst it and caught the end. <laughs> I love that music brings us all together. The beauty of travel is not just being able to explore new places, but meeting new people. I had a, a teacher colleague friend of mine tell me that when she was traveling around Europe, she met someone who became her best friend. And it was something that I thought would be awesome, but didn't really expect it. So after I jumped in for this quick sing-along for Wonderwall by Oasis, I had to join the end of the line for the flamenco show. Greatest decision I ever made. I started talking to this chick who was only a few years apart from me, lived maybe half an hour away from me, and we just had so much in common. So that's where I met my best friend, Alex, and we got to travel a few countries together before she left our tour group, and we've been hanging out ever since. My name is Alexandra. I live in Sydney, and I am from Macedonia. I moved to Australia 13 years ago now. We were waiting in line to get to the flamenco show um, and it was, there was a lot of people there 
and I remember feeling really overwhelmed because I didn't know anyone um, on the tour. I was just getting to know everyone and it was very daunting. Uh, I was really, you know, felt like I was a bit out of place. Um, it was really challenging for me because I've never done such a thing before. Um, and then she comes along um, and she's like, oh, bubbly and outgoing. And she's like, hey, how's it going? And start talking to me. And I'm like, oh, hey, that's, that's good to, to know I have a friendly face um, when you, you know, you don't know anyone. And she made me feel really comfortable and welcomed. Um, she made me feel like I was belonging part of the group we ended up going spending the next couple of weeks um, while traveling like best of friends and we still are um, and I'm just so glad I met her um, through this this way because the memories we share are incredible and not many friends are lucky enough to say wow we traveled Europe together and that's how we met we never knew, met each other before then so many so many good memories together so please enjoy um, and spend time to see what um, Europe has to offer um, yeah and a girl like Ali has a lot to offer too she's and she's really one of the most positive people I know. Um, so good luck, guys, and enjoy her content. Going to Spain and not seeing a flamenco show is like going to Italy and not even trying a pizza. It's an absolute must do and you're crazy if you don't. We were lucky enough to be able to get tickets to go to Tarantos, which is Barcelona's oldest tablajo, which is like Spanish slang for floorboards. Wow, it was awesome. I thought I was passionate about dancing. These people took it to a whole new level. It was intense. The power of their footwork not only shook the stage, it shook the whole room, but it was well worth it. After the show finished, we all met back up on the corner of this block getting ready to go nightclubbing. And it was obvious that our group had drank the entire karaoke place dry. They'd started singing on the side of the road. There was, um, cause Gabs, you remember the Brazilian mate of mine. So obviously he speaks Portuguese. And there was a brother and sister um, that went on the tour with us and they both spoke Portuguese as well. So they were singing in Portuguese. I thought I'd be able to catch it, but I only got the end of it, but it was it was evident we we're going to have a bit of a wild night. And I thought we were tanked. The Arc de Triomphe is a beautiful little monument just in the middle of a walkway and it gets pretty busy. It's a good place to people watch. One morning I was sitting having a coffee and I noticed a bunch of old men playing cards and it reminded me when I saw guys playing cards at the Vatican. So I sat there for about half an hour and watched them play. It got pretty heated. I don't speak very much Spanish, but yeah, the gesturing certainly rivaled the Italians. One of the coolest things about Barcelona is the work by Antoni Gaudi, I think is how you pronounce his name. He was this insane architect that was well before his time, probably the weirdest and wackiest one the world has ever seen. His work is kind of like sprinkles on top of the, the cupcake that is Barcelona. As you're walking around the streets, you just happen to stumble by this building that looks unlike anything else around it beautiful colors, amazing designs, and you just sit there and marvel at it. We actually got to see a few different places on La Rambla where we were staying, and there was always a massive line just hovering around this building, checking it out, but it's well worth a look. Sagrada Familia is the biggest, brightest and most beautiful basilica that I've seen in all of Europe and actually the world. It's another famous work by Gaudi 
and it honestly puts Italy to shame. If you only have a day in Barcelona, this is definitely the place to go. It is the number one tourist attraction there for a reason though. Before you even go inside, you need to take a happy lap around the building. Every single face of this building is completely different and weirder and wackier than the last. It almost looks like it was built in different time periods by different people, but it was all the mental masterpiece of one guy. After you spend the time looking on the outside, if you were anything like me, you had no idea what was coming inside and I kind of expected everything to be crazy and different, but it was honestly one of the most beautiful places and spaces that I've seen in the world. Sagrada Familia is truly Gaudi's masterpiece. The colors on the windows were incredible. I don't know how he come up with this stuff. Even the way he's designed the roof, no matter what direction you look at, there's something beautiful to appreciate. If you do not get tickets in advance, you will be waiting in queues that would surely rival Disneyland, but it is worth a visit to go inside. Don't just look at the outside. I'll give you an honest warning though. Sagrada Familia has been under construction for something like 150 years. So no matter when you go, you're bound to see scaffolding and cranes. But lucky the building is so incredibly large that you still get to see majority of the face before you see where all the work is happening. I actually spent quite a lot of time with Gabs throughout our trip, but he was actually leaving us in Barcelona. So I wanted to do our time justice. We'd heard that the number one restaurant in Barcelona to eat paella had a six month waiting list, but I decided to take a chance. So I said to Gabs one day, why don't we go on a wander and we'll see if we can get lucky. And yeah, we did. So we rocked up to this place and they told us that there's no way you're gonna get in. So I asked if they could show us around anyway. They did and it was so cool. It was like underground, it looked like a cave. Anyway, as we're about to leave, I happened to lock eyes with the bartender, recognized her to be Filipino and I'd spent quite a bit of time in the Philippines. So we started to have a little bit of a chat and the guy was sort of ushering us out and she said, oh, did you want to eat here? And I said, oh, I was hoping to. And she said, oh, if you're happy to sit at the bar, I'm happy. And I looked at the guy, we looked at Gabs and we're like, yes, score. So we ended up sitting at the bar and she was a bartender and she was from Manila. And <laughs> if you are Filipino and you're from Manila, you get a thousand gangster points from me. Takes a lot to scare me, but <laughs> a couple of days in Manila scared the bujuzas out of me. So if you're from there, to me, you're gangster. Anyway, me and her had this awesome chat just about everything, travel, life, living and working in another place, especially because I wanted to live in Barcelona. So we're talking and she was making us cocktails. <laughs> And when it came time to order food, Gabs and I went for the seafood paella. That's like, it's what people do. And she said to us, don't do that. The secret to this place, the number one dish is actually the duck. We looked at each other and thought, yeah, why not? So we ended up getting both. It was probably the best meal. Yeah, best meal I had in all of Spain, all of Europe actually. But at the same time, it was good to spend that time with Gabs and I really didn't want him to leave. So after we had lunch, we decided to just roam around on foot and see what we can find. I'll be honest with you, we weren't expecting to see so much awesome sauce, but we saw everything. We ended up going past and having a look at this park. It looked so cool. And then I later found out it was Park Well, which is another work by Gaudi. Anyway, we walked around and ended up going to this awesome lookout. I don't know how Aussies manage to do this. We just find each other no matter where we are in the world. So we walked to the top of this lookout 
and I'm looking across Spain and I literally bumped into another Australian, but this place wasn't very stable and it was very small and crowded. So we had a bit of a laugh. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Not the place to bump someone. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> And I've got to be honest with you, it's those little magical moments when two strangers meet, have a talk, even if it's just brief and laugh together. It makes me think if the whole world can have little exchanges like this, we truly can have a planet full of positivity and love. So Gabs and I were making our way back to our hotel in the afternoon and the sun had just started to set after we were at the lookout and we happened to stumble across the museum. There were thousands upon thousands and thousands of people just standing around. We weren't sure why, but we got amongst it with the crowd and asked around and apparently the magic fountain show was about to start. walked all the streets all night, ended up having dinner and then he left, but we're still in contact and that's the beauty of travel. The people you meet, the friendships you make and the connections that go all the way around the world. I honestly can't recommend Barcelona enough. I want to live there and then from there explore the rest of Spain. The food is incredible. The drinks are very well priced and super tasty. There's so much beauty just on the streets. This architect has done amazing work all over the city. From the siestas to the sunsets, the people and the lifestyle, there is just so much to love and see and do that makes you wanna be in Barcelona. Thank you, Barcelona. Thank you for the fun. Thank you for the fanciness. Thank you for the music. <laughs> the sangria, the amazing food. Thanks for that introduction to a lifestyle that has some ease and flow with the busyness and craziness of life. Thank you for giving me an awesome end to my time with Gabs and an amazing beginning with my best friend, Alex. I honestly can't thank this place enough, but honestly, three, four days wasn't enough. I thought to myself, minimum three months, I want to live there not just to explore the rest of Spain, but to really get amongst it. You will not be disappointed. You have to go. I'll see you soon, beautiful people.